Well, g'day, flatties and globe defenders. It's Critical Think from Down Under. Well, today I'm reviewing this video that Taboo Conspiracy put out that's uh, brought to you by David, uh, the mechanical engineer. Well, I'm glad they put the quotes there because uh, reviewing this material, I can come to several conclusions. And one of them is that David is trolling. This is so blatantly wrong, it could be just a big troll. Or number two, David is not really a mechanical engineer, because no mechanical engineer would make the mistakes that are in this video. Or number three, Dave, if David is a mechanical engineer, then I'd say he'd probably be qualified to be a lawnmower repairman. Right, so uh, let's go on to the first slide. Now, okay, they've titled it The Earth Does Not Spin. Um, they should have titled it Here's Why I Think the Earth Might Not Spin because there's no proof in here about the Earth not spinning. And the other thing here is um, there is a, a mistake here in the terms use uh, he's used centripetal force when he should be using the term centrifugal force so that's a bit sus but anyway um, everything here on this apart from the fact that they've stated the earth does not spin nothing to argue about there and again here it says here if you believe in a ball earth now the ball earth is not a matter of belief. This belief is just reserved for flat earthers. They use the term belief a lot because that's how they operate. But um, when you're a real engineer, you don't use the term belief. You just work in science and facts. And the fact is uh, the earth is a rotating oblate spheroid. So it's not a matter of belief. It's not believe in a, in a ball earth. The scientific data and all the facts say that it is a ball earth um, so it's I don't know why any engineer could possibly use that language uh, that's not the language of an engineer and again here uh, centrifugal force and gravitational force so actually what some of this description here is very good um, particularly if it helps flat earthers understand the globe model. So I've got no argument with that other than um, uh, other than the centrifugal force thing. <clears throat> this here is a great diagram because uh, this will help bring down uh, all the flat earthers and David. So this is a great diagram. I'm glad that he brought this one to the table. I've written over there, FC is the centrifugal force and it is in a direction perpendicular to the axis of rotation and it has a component FCX and a component FCY. Very good. He also again mentions here talking about a lateral force which is small. So there's none of this talk about being flung off the earth by the uh, rapid, rapidly spinning ball. So at least he's sensible about that. and um, But this bit down the end, complete rubbish about cars going north and uh, an Olympic runner would get slightly faster time. Complete rubbish. We'll get on with that. We'll show why that is a little bit later. So yes, it is always on. And just like gravity, it works just like that. It's a force. Gravity can be considered a force, and centrifugal force can be considered a force. So it would have to be there if the Earth is spinning. Indeed, it would just read that again. There's, this is important. It would have to be there if the Earth is spinning. So, of course, the premise in this particular video is that it's not there. 
So we'll go through some of the um, manifesto. Um, so I've just highlighted some bits that I thought I would, could talk about. And then it says here, I have a simple way to prove the Earth is not spinning. Well, no, you don't. Um, this is, as usual, based on some misunderstanding of physics. And this involves just a little bit of math and that's it. Well, no, like I said, it's based on a misunderstanding. If one understands what the math is saying, I believe you will find it very difficult to believe the Earth is rotating. Well, I do understand the math, and I find it very difficult to believe that any mechanical engineer could possibly, could possibly say any of this rubbish. And... Uh, I've just realised it's such a blatant hole in the spinning ball earth theory. No mechanical engineer would actually use the term spinning ball. So this is a flat earther or somebody's trolling flat earthers. And uh, I do believe the earth is flat and motionless. You see that? That's a belief. It's not, it shouldn't be a belief. The shape of the earth is not subject to belief. It's determined by measurement and science. So you can throw that belief out the window, this reserve for flat earthers. Now, the other silly language here, we are going to use the unfortunate and generally accepted notion. Since when are facts unfortunate? Yes, they are generally accepted because they're facts. It's like saying, oh, I'm going to use the unfortunate and generally accepted notion that water is wet. Anyway, we will also ignore the Earth's supposed oblateness and assume a perfect sphere. Now, assuming a perfect sphere is not a good idea. Actually, the Earth uh, does not work like a perfect sphere. The oblateness is critical to the way this works, the way the mathematics works. Uh, just remember that the centrifugal force has caused the sphere to be oblate in the first place. So the fact that the oblateness exists is evidence of rotation. So assuming that it's a perfect sphere is not a good idea. But for the purpose of this exercise, we'll entertain this for a little bit. I am a mechanical engineer, just a lowly bachelor's degree. Hmm, seriously doubt that. But anyway, I recognise it may be a little difficult for those who aren't super familiar with physics and equations to follow along. Don't worry, I can follow along and I can confirm that uh, while the uh, physics and mathematics equations things are perfectly okay, um, the following assumptions are not. So based on modern science, the force of gravity is always pointed directly at the centre of the Earth's mass. Again, this is not quite true. Um, it's an oblate spheroid. The gravity vector may not point directly at the exact centre, but it's neither here nor there. This here equation, the accepted value of... Um, of the Earth's rotation is that radius per, radians per second, but it's not derived from this. If you actually calculate that out, you get a slightly different value, but it's close enough, not too much to worry. No issue really with the equations there. Like I said, the maths is fine, it's just the reasoning is bogus. This is where we start to get into the area where the mistakes are made. Now, if a person is at this location halfway on a ball earth between the equator and pole and not moving relative to the ground the central fugal force is a force vector pointed perpendicular and away from the earth's axis of rotation correct it's parallel with the force vector of a centripetal force of the person at the equator correct and since the radius of motion is now smaller the centripetal force and we're talking centrifugal remember is also a bit smaller. Correct. Are you starting to see the problem here? No, there's no problem. That's all correct. There's no problem. Now he's breaking the centrifugal force into components. He calls them FCY and FCX. That's okay. Great. 
And FCY is a vertical component relative to the person. And FCX is the horizontal component. Nothing wrong with that. So for a person not directly on the equator, we have three different forces acting on this person's body. Well, I wouldn't describe it as three different forces. Uh, at a stretch, you could say two, but they all add up to one single apparent force on a person. So the two that you could say was centrifugal and gravity. And these are two forces. The centrifugal force, you can... <clears throat> consider it as components in x and y direction but that doesn't make it two more forces it's all equivalent to one force anyway and this is uh, pretty much key to the mistakes that are made so this is the last page and uh, they say all right there's a if a 200 pound person would have a 0.346 pound of force on it uh directing them to the equator. This has massive implications. This means that anyone not directly on the equator will always have a force pushing them towards the equator. Well, a component of the centrifugal force is always pushing them toward the equator. Yes. Therefore, there should be a force of 157 grams pushing you forward if you face the equator. Yeah. That's okay. You cannot tell me that I would not feel the weight of a tomato always pushing me towards the equator. Well, it's not like you have a tomato pushing you in the back, right? This force acts on every molecule of your body. So I am going to tell you that you would not feel the force of a tomato over your whole body, no matter which direction you face. Now, one might argue that since we're all born and grow up and live with this, then we simply wouldn't notice it. Yes, that's right. You wouldn't notice it. Luckily, we don't even need to argue this point. Mm. The evidence of the non-existence of this force could be seen by placing a sphere on a level surface. Now, this is the mistake. Now, this is incorrect. This is not evidence of the non-existence of this force, and I will explain that shortly. And although small, we should always see the sphere rolling slowly toward the equator. No. No, you won't. And I'll explain why. I know for a fact that we have a perfectly spherical metal ball, perfectly polished and smooth, Placed on a perfectly leveled, flat and polished table, that sphere will not move unless a force acts upon it. Correct. Correct. This is an inescapable, undeniable fact brought to you by modern science and their math. Nothing wrong with the math. Nothing wrong with the science. All that's wrong is your understanding. <laughs> right. So, here's the final part. If anyone can set up an honest experiment showing me how Earth spin does tend to push things towards the equator, I will retract this statement and also print it out and eat it. <laughs> uh, I think you're going to need a bit of salt and pepper, perhaps. <laughs>